Oh, you didn't really think I was leaving, did you? The channel's only been up, like, what, seven, eight months, something like that? And, uh, no, I'm not going to quit that easily. And just by means of an apology, I've brought you a new commander, a Kiri Lineslinger. Never played Boros before, and I've quite liked the look of this commander for quite a while, so we'll get that going. Yeah, I don't... I don't like practical jokes. Um, but that one was harmless enough that I, I allowed myself to do it, and uh, hopefully none of you will fall out with me over it. Um, yeah, like with those those TV shows where a little kid falls off his bike and everyone points and laughs, or um, an, an old deer falls over on the dance floor at a wedding, I've, I've never found those things amusing. People can call me a prude and say that I have have no sense of humour, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's not really my type of thing. I don't like laughing at people's misfortunes, but hopefully that was um, a somewhat tasteful practical joke. And it, hey, for all I know, it might not even have fooled any of you, so there's no harm done there, is there? Anyway, let's get on with our gameplay commentary. Misra's workshop is three colourless, but you can only spend it on artifacts. And the chromatic lantern makes all of our artifacts tap for... Any colour of mana, but our opponent clearly doesn't like that. Akiri Line Slinger versus Reese the Redeemed, two cheap commanders pitting it off against each other. Felwar Stone will tap for white. Yeah, I think we can keep that. Don't think we're going to be getting down Akiri straight away. Yeah, maybe even going in for pure steel paladin before we get down Akiri. Which means we need to get down Felwar Stone first so that we can get some white mana going, assuming our opponent gets white mana into play. City of Brass will do it. And then a Jiraga Tree Speaker for our opponent. Reese the Redeemed is a 1 mana Celestia commander. A 1-1 one, one for 3 and tap. You create an Elf Warrior token. And for six and tap, you double up all your tokens. Okay, Sram Senior Edificer is also more card draw, so we'll get down this Felwar Stone. Hopefully we can make a land next turn. If we do, we can go for Pure Steel Paladin and then get down the Jitte. I think that's okay. Our commander is a Kiri Line Slinger, a two mana Boros commander, 0 3, with first strike and vigilance. It gets plus one to its power for each artifact we control. And it also has partner, which we can't take advantage of in this format. Leveling up Jiraga Tree Speaker means it will tap down for two mana. And Reese the Redeem comes down, and we'll see if our opponent has another one drop for us. Nope. Just getting down Reese, and we do not have a land, unfortunately. We'll go for... This triggers doesn't need metal craft, does it? Whenever equipment enters the battlefield, so we don't have to cast it. Yeah, we'll go for the Pure Steel Paladin. There's more upside on that than there is on SRAM. Because with metal craft, we can make our equipment cost zero. Or the equipment cost... Cost zero. We'll go for the Jitte next turn and try and get into a land because when Jitte enters, the Pure Steel Paladin will draw us a card. An Oracle of Muldaya for our opponent, potentially ramping a lot. There's a Plains on top and then revealing an Immaculate Magistrate. It doesn't look like our opponent has another land in hand. Okay, we get into a mountain. Uh, yeah, that's not the worst. We have white from Felwar Stone. So let's play that. We'll go for... Yeah, let's just go for the Mask of Memory now because it's less of a threat to our opponent. And then if we go Jitte next turn, that will activate Metal Craft and we'll be able to surprise our opponent with a Jitte attack. Oh, Mishra's Workshop as well. Yeah, we'll be able to get a lot of stuff going next turn. So let's go for a Kiri Line Slinger. Yeah, I think we're just going to go full on Voltron next turn. Uh, can we go 
Yeah, I think I'm just trying to think what we can go for next turn. I think we can go for SRAM. And then we'll have three mana into Sword of Fire and Ice. The two open mana into the Jitte. All of our equipment can equip for zero, thanks to the Pure Steel Paladin. And we'll draw a couple of cards, each from SRAM and Pure Steel Paladin, assuming all this stuff stays in play. And the Jitte is going to be really good against Reese because we can kill off Reese, which I'm really eager to do now that our opponent's gotten down these soldiers. Yeah, so ooh, locks it on Warhammer as well. Uh, yeah, I think we go with the original plan. Our opponent's probably just going to chump though, so do we care about... Yeah, I think we get down the Loxodon Warhammer first, actually. Because the Sword of Fire and Ice isn't going to do anything. It might do next turn. Yeah, an Etch Champion would be good, actually. Protection from all colours with the sword equipped. Yeah, I'm going to go for the Etch Champion so that we can get equipments onto that. That can get through more easily than Akiri can. This also has Metalcraft. Protection from all colours when we control three or more artifacts. And then we're going to go for the Jitte. SRAM and Pure Steel Paladin will draw us a card here. Okay, we've got a land for next turn. We can equip for zero onto a Kiri, and then equip for zero onto a Kiri again. And our opponent can gang up on us here and kill off our Akiri, but they're going to have to dedicate a lot to that. Plus we have Vigilance, and plus if we deal damage, then we'll get counters on the Jitte. So it's a more difficult block for our opponent than, than you might realise. Okay, we're just dealing damage here. I think we have to deal damage to proc this. Yes, we draw two cards and discard one. No reason not to go for Mask of Memory here. Uh, Ash Barons, yeah, we'll get rid of Ash Barons. We don't care about that. And then I think we'll use the Jitte to kill off the Reese. And then we'll keep a counter on Akiri to buff her so that she can block. Yeah, so that she can block better. So I have to hope our opponent doesn't go for a board wipe here. They've still got quite a few cards left in hand. We might have overextended a little bit, getting both SRAM and Pure Steel Paladin out there. Oh, Huatli Radiant Champion comes down, and they'll be able to get that into limit break range, which is minus eight. An emblem, whenever a creature enters under your control, you draw a card. Yeah, so the quicker we deal with our opponent, the better. It goes straight up to ten. So it'll have two loyalty after a, a minus eight next turn. We could swing through at Hartley with the etched champion. Not sure I'm, I'm really all that worried about. Uh, am I worried about it? I think I'd rather just swing through for lethal. Or try and get as close to lethal as we can on my opponent, to be honest. Yeah, I've just worked it out very quickly in my head. If we get Etch Champion through a couple of times, straight through to our opponent, and use the counters for plus two, plus two, if we do that three times over the course of a couple of turns, that will be 22 exactly, I think. Now the question is, do we want to be really aggressive or do we want to play it safe? Well, we can get down another equipment, or another artifact, in the form of Dark Steel Citadel. Uh, we can go for Chromatic Lantern here, can't we? Yeah, we can go for Chromatic Lantern. And then it's Loxodon Warhammer. And we'll draw a couple of cards here. Okay, Boris Signet we're not too worried about yet get down another equipment and draw a couple more cards. Sword of Fire and Ice, protection from red and blue. We'll shock something and draw a card if we deal damage to our opponent. Doesn't count if we deal it to our uh, to our opponent's Planeswalker. 
Now, I think I'm going to play it safe. I might regret it, but I think I'm going to play it safe and go after our opponent's commander, um, Planeswalker. Just see how big we can make the X champion. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we can't kill it is the only problem. So we'll just have the exact same problem next turn. I think Umazawa's Jitte is plus two, plus two, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so that's seven, eight, nine power. We can't kill the Huatli. So all our opponent has to do is get down a bunch more creatures next turn and then... Hmm, yeah, it's difficult. We can still deal damage with the Jitte and kill off the, the captain at least. And then we'll have it... Yeah, I'm just going to play it safe here and go after the etched champion. Or go with the etched champion into the Huatli. Yeah, and then if we plus here, we'll knock it down to one. And that means that they'll be at exactly emblem range if they don't play any creatures and plus her. So we'll just get all this equipment shifted back onto our commander. First Strike Vigilance, it's a, a really good blocker. And we have Swords to Plowshares next turn. I think we are going to use that on on the uh, Captain of the Watch. Might even use it on Draga. In fact, one, two, three, four. Makes sense to do that now. We'll kill that off so our opponent has a lot less mana next turn. They might get into a couple of lands off the top with Oracle. But if there looks anything like ours with that thing, then hopefully it won't happen. Yep, no land on top, luckily for us. Although that is a Selvala, and that's a good commander in its own right, actually. Our opponent's back down to four mana here. They could go for Nykthos and get one, two, three, four white mana off of that. But then they'll only have access to one green from the other land. Yeah, this looks like a Convoke spell to me. Our opponent is tapping down creatures. Oh yeah, it's the Obelisk of Erd. I was worried about a, a Conclave there. What's that called? Cord of, Cord of the Conclave, is it? Something like that. But this is creatures of the Chosen type get plus two, plus two. And they have Chosen Soldier. So their Lord gets a big buff as well as their Soldier tokens. Luckily, we've got Loxodon Warhammer, which is Trample, a plus three power boost, and a Lifelink. And I think now that we've dealt with our opponent's mana a little bit, I think we just need to ignore this thing. Yeah, knowing what we know now, perhaps should have just swung in with the Etch Champion straight at our opponent. Okay, we'll get that down, and... We'll get down the Coalition Relic. And potentially a good partner for Akiri is Bruce Tal, Boorish Herder. But we can't make use of that in this format, so we will just have to use our imagination. Get down the Boros Signet as well. Might as well play all this stuff while we can. And then we'll see about drawing a card with the Sword of Fire and Ice. Actually, we'll draw a couple of cards because the Mask of Memory will go off as well. So let's go straight at our opponent. Oh, and actually could have gone in with Akiri as well there. Yeah, should have gone in with Akiri. Uh, oh, but actually Bruce, Bruce Tal will, whenever it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gains double strike until the end of the turn. Yeah, yeah, we should have gone for that actually, in hindsight. I haven't played with Bruce Tile before, so that's uh, that's a mistake from me. And actually should have shot the Planeswalker as well, so still getting used to this deck, as you can no doubt tell. Uh, where are we now? That is Discard a Land, is it? Yes, Discard a Land. So we will go for Mox Diamond and discard the Planes. We can get that back out with Crucible. We'll have to save Bruce Tal for next turn. Yeah, we could have gone we could have got our opponent there. That's just bad play on my part. Sword of Feast and Famine comes down. Drawing us some more cards. And we'll get our Akiri equipped up again. 
And we'll just go for Crucible of Worlds and hold up swords. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Should probably actually have a, a fling in this deck now that I think about it. Yeah, the more I play the deck, the more I'm thinking of cards that I'd like to draw into. And a fling would be good. We sacrifice a creature and deal its damage to our opponent. Yeah, our opponent wouldn't have been able to get the limit break off there had we have shocked it. I kind of went into autopilot there for a second with the Sword of Fire and Ice. Definitely should have shocked the Planeswalker there, but I just went for our opponent's face. Luckily for us, they only have four mana available to them because we got rid of the Jiraga Tree Speaker. So they can't necessarily get out a lot of creatures here. And they only get three mana from Nykthos now, thanks to Hwartley. Okay, so Valor comes down. That will trigger the emblem and draw our opponent a card. Yeah, and our opponent scoops there. Uh, we were definitely just going to do our usual trick and go over to Etch Champion and swing in for lethal. Um, which, yeah, I haven't worked that out, but I think we definitely could have gotten it off. That's two, four... Seven, uh, eight, nine, and then ten, eleven from the shock, and then we could have buffed with the Jitte plus two plus two as well. So yeah, um, could have won a turn sooner. Um, I just completely planked on the Bruce Tile there. When it enters or attacks, it gives something double strike and life link. We could have given this thing double strike and life link, and then it would have um, triggered the. Sword of Fire and Ice twice, that would have been an extra 4 damage, and we definitely would have gotten the game off to a close there, but it was a good showing from Akiri Line Slinger, and it just shows that we don't have to solely rely on Akiri, we can make use of other creatures and get damage through with those, so hopefully that was of some enjoyment to you all. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel, thank you for watching.